If there's one thing that always made me cringe, it was tax season. The mere thought of it was enough to make my stomach turn. April 15th loomed on my calendar like a dark cloud every year, taunting me as the deadline inched closer. I wasn't a stranger to hard work. I'd spent years building my business from the ground up. But when it came to taxes, it felt like no matter what I did, I was always left holding the short end of the stick. For years, I did what most people do. I gathered my W2S, 1099S, and every other confusing form the taxman threw at me, and I handed them over to my accountant with a defeated sigh. The results were always the same, a hefty tax bill that left me wondering why I even bothered working so hard. The irony wasn't lost on me. I was putting in countless hours to grow my income, only to watch a significant chunk of it disappear into the abyss of taxes. The worst part, I felt powerless. The tax code was a labyrinth of rules, regulations and loopholes that seemed designed to keep people like me from getting ahead. Sure, I'd heard about the rich using fancy tax strategies to save millions, but that was for the ultra-wealthy, right? Not for someone like me, just trying to make a decent living and maybe save enough to retire comfortably one day. But everything changed one fateful afternoon. I was sitting in a dreary waiting room at my accountant's office, flipping through a financial magazine to kill time, when an article caught my eye. It was about a simple tax strategy that, according to the author, could save the average person thousands of dollars every year. My heart raced as I skimmed through the article, the words jumping off the page, tax savings, minimal effort, maximize deductions. I must have read that article five times before I was finally called into my accountant's office. As I sat down across from him, the usual sense of dread creeping up on me, I couldn't shake the thought of that article. Could it really be that simple? Could I have been missing out on thousands of dollars in savings all these years? I was hesitant at first, afraid to ask my accountant about something I'd read in a magazine, but desperation has a way of pushing you out of your comfort zone, so I decided to take the plunge. Jim, I started, trying to keep my voice steady. I was reading about this strategy in a magazine, something about maximizing deductions through a different filing approach. Do you think that could work for me? He looked up from his computer, eyebrows raised. What exactly did you read about? My heart was pounding as I explained the basics I'd gleaned from the article. It talked about something called tax loss harvesting and using retirement accounts strategically. The specifics were hazy, but the promise of saving thousands was clear. I watched as Jim leaned back in his chair, a thoughtful expression on his face. Tax loss harvesting, huh? That's actually a pretty effective strategy, but it's often overlooked by the average taxpayer, he said finally. It's not just for the rich, though. With the right approach, it could work well for you, too. For the first time in years, I felt a glimmer of hope. Jim went on to explain that tax loss harvesting involved selling off investments that had decreased in value to offset gains from other investments. By doing so, I could reduce my taxable income, effectively lowering my tax bill. And the best part, if my losses exceeded my gains, I could use those excess losses to reduce other income by up to $3,000 each year, carrying forward any unused losses to future years. It sounded too good to be true. Could something so simple really make that big of a difference? Jim assured me it could, and he even suggested a few additional strategies to maximize my tax savings. That night I barely slept. My mind was racing with possibilities. I had been so resigned to my fate, so convinced that there was no way out of the tax trap, that the idea of finally taking control of my finances felt almost surreal. But there was a catch. I would have to do the work. I would need to educate myself, stay on top of my investments, and be proactive about managing my taxes. It wasn't a one-time fix, it was a long-term commitment. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was determined. The next morning, I dove headfirst into research. I read everything I could find about tax loss harvesting, from detailed IRS publications to blog posts by financial planners, I subscribed to newsletters, attended webinars, and even signed up for an online course on tax strategies for small business owners. The more I learned, the more empowered I felt, but knowledge wasn't enough. I needed to put it into practice, and that's where the real challenge began. I opened up my brokerage account, the same one I'd been neglecting for years, and started sifting through my investments. Some had performed well, while others were clearly in the red. It was a tough pill to swallow realizing just how much money I had lost by not paying attention. I began the process of selling off my losing investments, a move that felt counterintuitive at first. Every instinct I had told me to hold on, to wait for the market to turn around. But I reminded myself that this was part of the strategy, 
part of taking control, I reinvested the proceeds in similar but different securities to maintain my portfolio's overall balance, a concept known as wash sale rules, which I had learned about during my research. The first year was nerve-wracking. I was constantly second-guessing myself, wondering if I was making the right moves. But when tax season rolled around, the results spoke for themselves. My taxable income was significantly lower, and the tax bill that had haunted me for so long had shrunk to a fraction of what it used to be. I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. I had saved thousands of dollars, and the strategy was working exactly as promised. But it wasn't just about the money, though that was certainly a relief. It was about the sense of empowerment, the knowledge that I was no longer a passive victim of the tax system. I was in control, and that feeling was priceless. But my journey didn't end there. Success, I realized, was not a destination, but a continuous process. The tax code changes, markets fluctuate, and life circumstances evolve. I couldn't afford to rest on my laurels. I had to keep learning, keep adapting, and keep pushing forward. The following year, I expanded my strategy. I opened a health savings account, HSA, another tax-advantaged vehicle that allowed me to save pre-tax dollars for medical expenses. I also started contributing to a solo 401 K, which not only reduced my taxable income, but also helped me save for retirement more aggressively. Each new move brought its own set of challenges and learning curves. The HSA, for example, required careful tracking of qualified medical expenses, while the Solo 401k came with its own set of contribution limits and rules. But the effort was worth it. Every dollar I saved in taxes was a dollar I could reinvest in my business, my future and my peace of mind. As the years went by, my confidence grew. I no longer dreaded tax season, in fact, I began to look forward to it as an opportunity to review my financial strategy and make adjustments. I became more strategic with my charitable giving, taking advantage of the tax benefits of donating appreciated securities instead of cash. I also explored the benefits of a Roth IRA conversion during a low-income year, allowing me to lock in future tax-free growth. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. There were setbacks too like the year I miscalculated a capital gain and ended up with a surprise tax bill, or the time I inadvertently triggered the alternative minimum tax, AMT, because I didn't fully understand the implications of certain deductions. Those moments were humbling, reminders that even with the best laid plans, mistakes can happen, but I didn't let those setbacks derail me. I learned from them, adjusted my strategy, and moved forward with even more determination. I sought out new resources, connected with other small business owners who were also navigating the complexities of the tax code, and even hired a tax advisor who specialized in working with entrepreneurs. One of the most significant shifts in my mindset came when I realized that tax planning wasn't just about saving money. It was about aligning my financial decisions with my values and goals. I began to see taxes not as a burden, but as a tool I could use to shape my financial future. By being intentional with my tax strategy, I was able to free up resources to invest in the things that mattered most to me, my family, my business, and my community. For example, I started a donor-advised fund, DAF, which allowed me to set aside money for charitable giving in a tax-efficient way. The DAF gave me the flexibility to donate to causes I cared about over time, while still receiving an immediate tax deduction. It was a win-win, and it deepened my sense of purpose in my financial journey. As my business grew, so did the complexity of my tax situation. But instead of feeling overwhelmed, I saw it as an opportunity to keep refining my strategy. I incorporated my business, which opened up new tax-saving opportunities like the Qualified Business Income QBI, deduction. I also explored tax credits for things like energy-efficient home improvements and hiring employees from certain targeted groups. Every year, I reviewed my tax strategy with my advisor, looking for ways to optimize and adapt we discussed potential changes in tax laws, evaluated the impact of new investments, and planned for future life events like my children's education and my eventual retirement. The process was dynamic, and it required ongoing attention and effort, but the rewards were undeniable. As I sit here today reflecting on my journey, I'm struck by how far I've come. What started as a desperate attempt to escape the clutches of the taxman has turned into a powerful tool for building the life I want. I've saved tens of thousands of dollars over the years, but more importantly, I've gained control over my financial destiny. The truth is, 
Tax strategy is not just for the wealthy or the financial elite. It's for anyone who's willing to put in the time and effort to understand the system and make it work for them. It's about being proactive, staying informed, and making smart decisions that align with your goals. If there's one lesson I've learned, it's this. Don't underestimate the power of a simple tax strategy. It might seem daunting at first, but with the right approach, it can change your financial life in ways you never thought possible. I'm living proof of that. And as tax season approaches once again, I no longer feel that familiar sense of dread. Instead, I feel a sense of anticipation, knowing that I have the tools and the knowledge to make this year's taxes work for me, not the other way around.